Father, thank you so much that you are in our presence. You love us and it is your love that has brought us at this very moment to this place, Lord. And we love you. We love you, Father. And because of this love, we want to hear from you. And we want to obey you. We want to do what your word says. In the past, we have been doing things the way we wanted. And we found ourselves in a mess. But it is your love that has changed our lives, changed our heart. And it is your love that carries us every moment. Father, thank you that it is always, always your will that your children experience that life that Jesus came to give us in abundance. It is always your will, Father. And this afternoon as we are gathered to Lord, you are going to teach us how each one of us can experience that abundant life that Jesus came to give us. Father, I met a few people and I heard each one going through terrible, terrible situations in this country, Lord. Terrible trials. Don't know what to do in the midst of these trials. Where can we go to? Only to you. And this afternoon, Father, you are going to show us the way. Because Jesus, you said, you are the only way. The way, the truth, and the life. So, our ears are attentive to hear your word, your voice. Our hearts open to receive every word, every seed that you are going to plant. And our minds ready to be reviewed according to your word. Speak, O oh Father, to each one of us by the power of your Spirit. That every word that goes forth will accomplish the purpose and bear fruit in our life. We thank you, we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. So in other words, he doesn't say, if you go 
through diverse temptations, but he says, when you go. So if you are a Christian, and as long as you are living on this planet Earth, one thing is sure, that troubles will surely come, trials will surely come, temptations will surely come, and they are meant to come to discourage you from the enemy. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Just put the slide. Now let's see what is the meaning of the word trial, trouble, temptation. Because every person seated here has gone through this experience and is going through this experience and today God wants to teach us how can we use trials and turn them into victory. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 This verse number 2 to 8 gives us a solution how each one of us can turn our trials into victory. If you look into the Bible, there are heroes in the Bible who are just like us and they experience tremendous trials in their life which look like they would not only be defeated but they would also be killed. But in spite of all those trials, they operated in God's way and they turned into victory. And when you read the Bible of those testimonies, the book of James says, the same kind of testimony can be experienced by everyone who believes in Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 The reason why Satan uses trouble is to strike our spirits with fear. Because fear is an excess door for the enemy to strike each one of us. And that's why when trouble strikes us, trouble keeps on uh, forcing us to think on that circumstance or that situation and you keep on pondering it, you keep on meditating on it and you have sleepless nights, you have, you have uh, even though you want to focus on something else, you still get focusing on our troubles. Is that true? Yes. Hello, is that true? Yes. So when a person is going through a trial, there is going to be lots and lots of thoughts running in that person's mind and most of the time those thoughts are going to be extremely negative they are going to be negative suggestions, praise God, to bring in strife, to bring in bitterness, to bring in unforgiveness, to bring in all kinds of negative emotions. And that is why the first thing that the book of James says, count. Some Bible says, consider. The meaning of the word consider means, a person takes into account a lot of pondering, a lot of studying, a lot of meditating, and after that, makes a decision. And here is God saying, no matter what your trial is, I do not want you to focus on any of your trials, but I want you to focus on my word, myself, and consider it nothing but joy. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Now, a person will say, that possible in today's life because there is so much of stress going on in my life there is so much of problem going on my friend as long as your focus is on your problem you have uh, you know in, uh, especially in Dubai there is something called as a calling card you call up India yes. because here you, know, you pay uh, through the phone a uh, lot of dirhams but there is something called as internet calling cards yes. 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 And then you call your loved ones in India and you can talk for a long time. The dirhams that you pay is extremely low. Yes. Yes. Now the same way, the stress, the bitterness, the negative thoughts that you got is nothing but your calling card, calling out the devil to strike you. Thanks for the silence. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when you are uh, meditating and studying God's word, you as a child of God is calling heaven. Can you ask your neighbor which calling card do you have? Hello. By default, listen, 
by default, as a fallen human nature, our mind is set to focus on things that are painful, hurting, and negative. And that's why God's word clearly says, pay no attention to it. Uh, pay, uh, pay no attention to it. Don't meditate on it, but meditate on my word day and night. And an excellent scripture would be uh, Joshua 1 8. Just go to Joshua 1 8. You have learned it before. How many of you want God to prosper you? Come on. How many of you want God to prosper you? Now some hands went down, some are going down. See, that's called double minded. And God's word says, as long as you are double minded, you will receive nothing from the Lord. Praise God. How many of you want God to prosper you? Come on, lift your hands up, please. Let heaven look at you. Praise God. And how many of you want God to give you success? Some of you have been attentive and still lifting your hands up. Okay, let's read it now in Joshua 1 8. Come on, read it. This book of the Lord, everybody read it. Shall not depart out of your mouth then? Hallelujah. 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 In other words, we are champions 
in meditating our troubles and actually speaking, we ourselves are calling Satan and giving him access in our life to destroy our life. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But actually speaking, we who believe in Jesus, we who are anointed by Jesus, we are supposed to to put pressure on Satan using God's word, speaking God's word, and overcome our trials. Praise the Lord. So the first thing he says, consider it nothing. Now last month we explained about Jairus. You remember? Yes. Now, do you remember about Jairus? Yes. We explained about Jairus. I, I want to ask you a question. How come Jairus who could leave his daughter back home who is about to die and come to meet Jesus? Why is it? How can he leave his daughter back home who is about to die and come to meet Jesus? Because the same thing, the same scripture works over there. He has so much of consideration to think. On one side, the daughter, the daughter is going to die, all the family members are here, so many thoughts in his mind. And on the other side, he also has got thoughts running in his mind that there is a man named Jesus. That any, anyone who goes to him and speaks to him through his hands, the blind can see, the deaf can hear, the lame can walk, even the dead are reached. Now there are two sets of thoughts running in his mind and he has to make a decision which one am I going to focus on. And that's what James 1 says, my friend, no matter how many things are going around you, consider all those things nothing compared to the glory of God and be rejoicing because your God is greater than the situation that you are going Hallelujah! 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 So, Heavenly Father wants us to reject devil's calling car. What is the devil's calling car? The negative thoughts that he puts in our mind continuously bombarding those thoughts and he will give you every good reason he will do it so systematically and, and he will give you uh, like a powerpoint step by step and get you on a journey of reasoning till you come to a point where you begin to question God's word you begin to debate God's word one of the devil's calling card is to cause a debate with God's word a child of God never debates God's word but believes God's word as it is said. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, he says consider it nothing but joy. What is joy? Somebody said happiness. Joy and happiness are two different things. If you, if possible, please write down the definition of joy. Joy comes from what you know from God's word. Joy comes from what you know from God's word. What you know. And then know, please put that capital there, just underline that word know. Joy comes from what you know from God's word. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, let me give an example. When you watch a cricket match live, Till the last ball is pulled and the match is very close. You don't know which team is going to win and you are tensed. Then you say, see the last ball pulled and your team won the match. The same match, you are watching the highlights. Do you, are you under pressure this time? No. no. Why not? <laughs> you know the end result. In the same way, joy comes when you know what God has promised you in His Word, the God who has made a covenant with you and the God who is faithful and He keeps His covenant, no matter what, He doesn't fail. <laughs> Hallelujah! Hallelujah! So I have joy by knowing what? What God's Word says. A question to everybody. I have preached this before. Let's listen to it again. If you are working in the office, which doesn't happen, uh, all of you are working, but this doesn't happen in Dubai, I know, but it happens back in India. Wherever you are working, there are people who are troubling you, insulting you, 
abusing you, taking advantage of you, and doing all kinds of bad things to you. Can a person have joy? Huh? I will show you from the word of God that today before you go home, you will go and buy a cake and celebrate with joy. What did you write? What's the definition of joy? What did you write? Joy comes from what you know from God's word. Listen, when it, when it is happiness is when all things are in your favor. You desire for some things. It happened. Praise God. You are very happy. Your expectations were met. You are happy. So when it comes to happiness, it's always going to depend on what's on the outside. It affects you on the inside. But now when it is joy, it doesn't matter what's on the outside. What matters is, where is your mind set on? If it is set on God's word, and then that knowledge of God's word will bring forth joy in your heart. So the first thing God says is that no matter what trials you are going through and you want to turn the trials into victory, the first thing that a person should have is joy. That's why the singers will sing, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Hallelujah. Now let me show you how this joy comes. 1 Peter 3, 9. 1 Peter 3, 9. Yes, everybody, please. And listen, listen. Are we only the hearers or the doers? Doers. So we not only see the scripture, we hear it, and at the same time we commit ourselves, God, if this is what you are saying, I am willing to put it into practice. Amen. See, if I am only a person who is taking notes, coming here, listening to the word, and going back and not putting it into practice, even after 10 years, your situation will be the same. Situation changes when a person makes a decision, Lord, if this is what your word says, I'm going to follow you, irrespective of what, or how much uncomfort is there, I will continue to follow you. Amen? Amen. Yeah, please read it. Now this scripture speaks the same. 
It's speaking much more than 15,000. It's speaking about blessing in every area of your life. Hallelujah. If you understand God's way, then this opportunity that we have received, we will quickly respond by reaping with with good, with blessing. So what will I hear? Blessing. So now that I have got the knowledge of this world, now in the midst of this trial, am I going to be joyful or am I going to be depressed? If I consider this word, that this considering this word will produce joy in me. But if I do not consider this word, but I consider the situation that I'm going through, then I'm coming back home depressed, angry, and bitter. Are you, are you following? Yes. So the first key to turn my trials into victory is consider it nothing but joy. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Now, I heard this word, I learned this word. When the situation comes, I don't remind myself this word. What will be my response? I repeat again. I heard this word. I studied this word. But when the trial comes, I don't remember this word. What will be my action? So in other words, my action and my decisions are always based on the knowledge that I have at that moment. If my knowledge is negative, my decisions are negative, my actions are negative, my destination will surely 100% guarantee will be negative. But even though my situations are negative, but now understanding the word, the truth that sets me free, I make a decision to abide by God's way. I might look like a fool to everybody around, but praise be to God, the end result will be good to you. Hallelujah. So please write down, it's very, uh, when I go through trials, please write down, these are, these are very important points, golden points. When I go through trials, I must remind myself, I must remind myself of what God's word says of what God's word says. <coughs> now what happens when a person reminds himself of the word, what God's word says? Come on, what comes? Joy. Joy. Just give me Romans chapter 15 verse 13. Please read it. Now, the God of faith. God of faith. Now, now, might be you are sitting here and you are going through a situation like this with full of frustration. And your hope is extremely hopeless. Your hope is extremely negative. You have already had a defeated mindset. Now, having Third, 1 John 1 Peter 3 9 the God of hope has given you a new hope and said child I want you to respond my way and if you respond my way I am not going to give you blessing but you are going to inherit my blessing it's going to come as a birthright it's going to come because you are showing me evidence that you belong to me because inheritance comes only through the family, especially those who are in Goa, you make passport, Portuguese passport, and when I see all the Goans making Portuguese passport, I tell them, I ask you to some of them, can you adopt me? <laughs> they get Portuguese passport only because they are born in that Goan family. What is my mistake? <laughs> so
So, so for them it comes free, right? Come on, all they to do is show some evidence that they belong to the family. In the same way, God is saying, for me to inherit the blessing, I have to show evidence to God and to the devil who is giving me his calling card. And I say, hey, listen, I'm not answering, I'm not using your calling card. I'm using, I'm using God's calling card, 1 Peter 3 9. And I'm showing you evidence, devil. There was a time when I was living under your slavery, but today I have got evidence to prove to you that now I belong to Jesus. And when there is evidence, there is inheritance. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the more and more I show evidence, the more and more I remain constant, connected to God and the joy of God continually give me the strength in the midst of my hard times, trial times and lead me from that journey into victory. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's why, that's why he says he's a powerful. And when do I get this hope? I get this hope through the promises of God. He has made a covenant with me and he has said, I am the Lord your God who makes a covenant with you and he's a faithful God who keeps his word. The problem is, even though I've got a covenant with God, instead of using God's calling card, I use the devil's calling card and I begin to wonder, instead of inheriting from heaven, how come things are coming from heaven? Whose calling card are you using? By default, as a fallen human nature, it is natural for a human being even though he's a Christian, to use devil's calling card because all our life, right from childhood, we have been trained to believe according to our senses. And now, after so many years, thanks be to God, the gospel was preached and we came to know the truth and the truth has set us free. Amen. And now that we understand the truth, we have made a decision to walk in this truth every day of our life so that now it becomes a new lifestyle of walking into victory by reminding ourselves of what God says. Hallelujah. And that's why joy gives you the strength. And that's why he says, now the God of hope fill you with joy and peace in the living. <laughs> Everyone seated here are going to get this opportunity before you go to sleep tonight. Praise you are going to run into somebody who is going to be irritating. And I pray, Lord, that everyone will remind themselves of the scripture and say, God, thank you for giving me this opportunity. And then you started it, I will finish it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So remember, joy of the Lord will keep you strong in the midst of the trial. Hallelujah. And that's what Nehemiah, when they came back from slavery, and they were building the temple. He began to speak to the people. God's faithfulness. And the people repented of their sin. They repented of what they had done wrong. I want to tell you, there's not a single person over here who has not made errors. God knows that we will make errors. But God wants us to repent and start living a new life on His word. And God wants us to walk in victory. <coughs> Just because you did mistakes doesn't mean that's the end of life. God is a God who understands us and He says, Listen, even if you have made thousands of mistakes, I still have a way out for you, but only on one condition, if you are willing to abide in me continuously all the days of your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, Christianity is not for perfect people. Christianity is for broken people. People, a shattered people, people who have made a mess in their life, but praise God, Jesus is the, the, the way, the truth, and the life who came to give us life, even in the midst of hopeless situations, He will turn your situation and give you new hope and bring that hope into manifestation. If that was not so, I wouldn't have been standing here and preaching the gospel. My condition was hopeless. He turned it around. And the key was, how much can I be stuck to him? Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please lie down. Understanding God's word. Understanding God's word equips us with power. Understanding God's word equips us with power. And helps us to arise. And helps us to arise above the pressure of trials. The pressure of trials. So when we get Jesus' words, so when we get Jesus' words, we will get his joy. We will get his joy. Praise God. Now, now that I understand this is what God has promised me and this is going to be the end result. So when the trouble is coming against me, what do I use? Hello, what do I use? Joy. This knowledge that I now receive from God's word, I use this knowledge by putting it to practice again and again and again. And the more and more I do that, I'm using joy to travel my trouble. If I'm not using joy but I use worry, then my trouble will trouble me so much that I will be troubled the whole day and night. But if I use joy, then I'm, I'm learning to trouble my trouble. Now ask a question to yourself. I'm going through X, Y, Z situation in my life. Am I using joy to trouble my trouble when those thoughts are troubling me? See, everyone seated here is saying, God, please turn my trial into victory. But God is saying, the first thing that you've got to do is have joy. How many of us have an attitude of joy? How many of us have an attitude of thanksgiving? Reminding ourselves of the past victories that God has given. Reminding ourselves of the great witnesses and testimonies that are recorded in the Bible. And drawing that power from those testimonies and rejoicing and saying, God, if you did it on that day, you did it on that day, you did it on that day. The Bible says you are the same yesterday, today and forever. You will be one of mine. Hallelujah. So when you look at the heroes of the Bible, you will find them reminding themselves again and again how faithful God is, how mighty God is. And all these things, reminding all these things work in our thinking. So joy doesn't depend on the circumstances going, that's going around. Joy depends on a person on what are you focused on. Are you focused on God's word or are you focused on your situation? Can we just pause for a moment, close our eyes and ask God. Lord, today you, you have made me realize that I'm going through these trials and these trials are actually troubling my mind. But today you have shown us through the word the key to overcome trials in our life is joy. And this joy can only come through the knowledge of your word. This joy only comes reminding myself again and again of what your word says. This joy only comes by being a doer of your word. This joy only comes through the understanding of your word. Now I begin to understand, Lord, that Jairus was going through such terrible trouble. 
But yet he came to meet you and he was so silent. Even when he was going through that journey, he was extremely silent. Things did not go in his favor, but he was still holding his peace. Because his mind was focused on him. He began to remind himself how great and powerful you are. And there is nothing impossible to you. Even when the woman with the issue of blood began to speak a story for 12 years and everything seemed to get delayed, yet Jairus was fixed on him. He knew one thing. Even though this process looks to be difficult, one thing I know, my daughter shall live. In the same way, Lord Jesus, you have given me promises after promises in the word. I choose to believe them. But along with these promises, Lord, there are so many doubts. So many thoughts of different reason that challenges your word to lead me into unbelief. Lord, I now understand that this battle is not actually on the outside but this battle is actually on the inside. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask you to teach us and train us to renew our mind, to train our mind to focus on the things what your word says and not focus on those negative things. Lord Giles did not know how his daughter is going to be healed. The woman with the issue of blood did not know. But one thing they knew, that you are able to do it. Many a times in our lives, Father, when we go through this process, we allow our circumstances and situations to dictate terms with us. captivating our mind to go against your word. But today you have shown us a lot how important it is to be joyful. Today you have shown us a lot that joy gives us your strength in the midst of our trial. Today you have revealed to each one of us that in every battle of life God you are always willing to do but along with your willing you want us also to agree to you. Please forgive us. Many a times instead of agreeing to you, we have been agreeing to the lies of the enemy. We have been agreeing to the reasoning that is questioning your word. O oh, Father, as we focus on you and we ask of you, destroy every stronghold that has been built in our mind. 
destroy it. Every such stronghold you know, of negative thoughts. And let your anointing, let your spirit move, building up new strongholds on the word of God. I believe without a doubt, Father, that as your word is being heard, your word has entered deep down in the hearts of your children, Lord, destroying unbelief, destroying captivity, destroying spiritual blindness, destroying oppression and depression and every kind of fear that had captivated your children for years. Lord, your word says that you sent your word and healed and delivered your people. Thank you. Thank you, Father, that right now, that great miracle is taking place in our midst. Right now, mind set on trials and negative situations that setting is changed to a new set that the minds of your children are set on your word. Thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a big hand. That before I can see the victory on the outside, joy gives me the strength to see the victory first in my mind. And that's a, that's a training for every Christian. And that's a training when you look into the Bible as just like you look at your face in the mirror and take the corresponding action. And it's a training that will go on till the last breath of our life. And the quicker we train ourselves, the quicker we will have joy. Praise the Lord. Praise Hallelujah. Lord. Hallelujah. 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 So joy is that attitude. Just write down what's the meaning of the word attitude. Joyful attitude. Write down. Attitude means a manner of thinking. A manner of thinking, feeling, or acting that shows one's opinion. That shows one's opinion. So most of the time our opinion is based on our trial or on the word. For example, God's word says, love your enemies. What is our attitude? No, but what is our attitude? Hello, what is our attitude? If my focus is on God's word, then my attitude is always going to be positive. It's always going to be loving. It's always going to be based on unconditional doing good. But if my focus is not on God's word, I will say, yes, I know that God love your enemies, but Hallelujah. 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 So remember my friend, our future depends on our attitude. And God wants every one of us to develop that joyful attitude even in the midst of our trials. And that attitude gives evidence that I believe in God, I believe His Word, and His Word will never come back empty. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Now, with joy and peace comes faith. Because now we learn that the God of hope will fill us with joy and peace in believing. 
Now when I believe God's word, God's word will give me faith. faith. Praise God. If somebody asks you what is faith, faith simply means the way I think. If I think the way God's word says, praise God, and I act on it, it's faith. There is no evidence for it, but I yet take those actions based on God's word. Praise the Lord. Now, whatever scripture gives you the joy, that scripture will be tested in our life. Just look at James 1 verse 3. Knowing that the testing of your faith work in patience. So the first step is joy. Now that you are joyful, 1 Peter 3 9, you are joyful. Come on. And, and you are saying, okay, this is what I am going to do. This is what I am going to do. This is what I am going to do. What is the devil going to do? He is going to put pressure on those areas where you have renewed your mind and he is going to test you so that you do not do what the word says. Because please remember, when a child of God does what the word says, irrespective of how uncomfortable it is, how painful it is, that person becomes a big threat to the devil. Because if this word remains in us, this word will not only give us victory, but this word will teach us so that we can go and teach others how to get their victory as well. So, so that's, why, that's why Jesus said when the sower comes and sows the seed, Satan comes at once. Why do you think he comes at once? Because if that word remains in us, remember that word is spirit, that word is life, that word is God. And if I agree with that word, now I draw the strength of God along with my strength and I start operating in the supernatural. And that's why the devil challenges us that we disobey God's word. He challenges us that we do things contradicting to God's word. And if he's successful in doing that, we are already living a defeated life. Praise the Lord. Has it come? So please read that. Knowing, knowing this, that the testing of our faith working patiently. Now did he say, now did he say that you will be tested or your faith will be tested? Come on, look over there. So, so the scripture that is giving you joy, that same scripture gives you the faith. And that faith is your shield. That every time the devil speaks to you negative thoughts, you use the shield of faith. You open your mouth and you start speaking scriptures. And you block those thoughts that are coming against you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In, in Dubai, do they use GPS? Yes. 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 You, they use? Yes. Okay, well, why is it used? When a person gets lost and he doesn't know to find his way, he quickly types the destination. He uses the GPS and the GPS begins to guide him to the destination. Right? The scripture also is the GPS of heaven when you get lost in the midst of your trials and storms. The GPS called the X called as a spiritual GPS, praise God, where you get connected to the word of God, you don't know. Sometimes it so happens you are driving, 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 and it's says left and right and right and left, and it's so close. But when you don't know the destination, it looks like you're lost and you are in a land of nowhere. Come on. And then and when you reach there, you say it's so easy. That's exactly what God is saying. If you follow my instructions, my word, praise God, I will reach you to your destination. The storm will still be there, but you will be passing through the storm, but that storm will not be able to hurt you. I will get you through, but only on one condition. Get connected to my word. But most of the time, we are getting connected to what? Faith or worry? Most of the time, we are getting faith connected to 
are faith or worry. Faith. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, 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 listen. If you are getting connected to worry, you are on a wrong GPS. Where do you think you will land? On the wrong side. So is God to be blamed? Hello, is God to be blamed? No. no. He's saying no matter how much the devil is putting pressure on you, you can still find your way through if you get into my word. Praise God. Praise Hallelujah. 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 Now, now, why should I be joyful? There's one more reason why I should be joyful. Because in the midst of trials, these trials can bring the best that is inside of me which I don't know. Again, 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 again. When I'm in the midst of the trials and I'm focused on God's word, then these trials will bring the best that is in me which I don't know. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If I look into my life, my past life, I had nothing to do with God. I had no desire to do anything with God. I was busy in my business. But when a big trial came, and that trial nearly killed me and knocked me off, there came a time when I was brought to church and for the first time I opened my heart and my mind to hear what the word said and made a decision to do what the word said because there was no option at that time because I was in a deep pit and the only, uh, only uh, option that I saw was one chance was if I obey this word and I took that option and I began to obey the word. <coughs> the word not only brought me out of the trouble, but much more than that, the word changed my nature, changed my character, changed my destination, changed everything in me. See, listen, it was never, 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 never my desire to do with what I'm doing today. Never. But when, when the trial came and I turned to God, the trial which was meant to do evil to me, God used the same trial, praise God, to change my direction from hell to heaven. So if you're going through some trials, and I've got news to tell you, these trials are not meant to kill you, but these trials are meant to bring the best that is hidden in you, which you don't even know. I'll give you one example. I'll give you one example. When I got married, they gave me the mind for the first time in my life. <laughs> and it was compulsory for me to speak that evening. And I prepared what you call the speech. And I did not know in which pocket I kept. And I was searching for it. And the cameraman was taking the close-up. <laughs> Nobody has got mercy. <laughs> Do you know what it means? The whole crowd watching you? I was sweating. And then I said, forget the speech. And I took the mic. And it took me five minutes to speak the first three, like, three words. I was actually fearful. Nervous. But today when I see, the mic spends more time than any person. I never knew that. I never knew that God had given me the gift to preach. Praise God. At that time, the tongue was used to threaten, to fight, to give bad words and all those things. I never knew. But what happened? What did this trial do? Change the direction of my life. 
And if you are going through some trials, I've got news to tell you, the best that is hidden in you, which you don't even know, will be manifested and come out of you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> let me give one example, let me give an example. Praise God. We know that Adam was extremely sad in the garden of Eden. You remember that? Yes. God had given him everything. Yes. Everything was there, but he was sad. He had a problem. What was his problem? What was his problem? He was all alone. So those who are alone have got problems, those who are not alone have got no problems. <laughs> those who are alone, who are not married people, they got no problems. Some of them are saying multiple problems. <laughs> okay. Now, Adam was extremely sad. God put him to sleep. Got a rib out of him and created an E out of Adam. When he opened his eyes, he looked at the woman and he was so... I don't know how many kisses he must have given to God. Praise God. Hallelujah. But did he know that this E was already inside of him? Now that trial brought something that was best which was hidden in him, out of him. And in the same way, God is saying to you, if you are going through some trials, I will be to tell you, there are so many beautiful things that are put inside of you, which you don't even know. And if you continue to focus with joy in the midst of your trial, you, I'm not only going to give you victory in this trial, but I'm going to bring those things that are hidden inside of you, out of you. Praise the Lord. Like gold is tested in fire, is purified in fire. Praise God. So our faith also gets purified in fire. Praise the Lord. Uh, we learned, uh, I think, two months back that we rejoice in our tribulations. Romans chapter, just put Romans chapter 5. Onwards. What does it say? We rejoice in our tribulations. Then, not yet come. And not only. Because tribulations work in patience, patience work in experience and experience. Now, what is he saying? Most of us rejoice in good times or in bad times. But St. Paul says, I am rejoicing in good times, but I want you to tell me, I rejoice more in bad times. Why? Because in my bad times, or in the times of my trials, out of it comes patience. I am able to develop patience. And when patience comes, it develops my character with an experience. And that character and that experience and that uh, patience brings about a new hope and that new hope does not disappoint us because God has poured His love into us. Let me give an example. A lady goes to a market and picks up two knives. Do your ladies use knife? Do you use knife? Look at vegetables, right? Okay. So she brings new, two new knives and both of them are exactly identical. <coughs> no difference. One is of a cheaper quality and the other one is a branded one. So she starts using one knife. After two months, she is, she is about to cut a tomato. Instead of cutting the tomato, it becomes, uh, the knife is used as a juicer. The juice comes out of the tomato. Why? When she puts pressure, instead of it cutting, the juice comes out. Why? 
is not shy. The other nights she begins to use two years have gone by, but it's still sharp. Why the difference? Hello, why the difference? Because it's random. Okay, you put a name on the other one also. <laughs> uh, because both are steam, but one is hard, it is tempered. Praise the Lord. And therefore, the life of that blade or that knife is extremely strong. In the same way, God is saying to us that when we go through trials, the trials are not meant to kill us, but the trials are meant to make our faith strong. Tempered strong. So that this faith will not be a wavering faith, but this faith will be so strong that it will keep on coming through the trials and give us victory all the time. two sets of Christians. One set of Christians which says, praise the Lord, hallelujah, God is good all the time, great and mighty is my God and all those things. But when trial comes, when faith is tested, out of that same mouth comes worry. There's another Christian also says the same words, but when trial comes, out of his mouth comes joy. Out of his mouth comes the word of God. Out of his mouth comes his faith. Now who is going to get the victory? And what about the first one? So the first one is a fake Christian. The second one is a genuine Christian. Just as in the two nights, they look the same. One was fake, one was genuine. How do you know you are a genuine Christian? In the midst of your trial. Nobody liked it, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Ask any more, who are you? Praise the Lord! Can we just close eyes? And what we have done? Let's digest it and ask ourselves, am I a Christian of worry and anxiety, frustrated all the time, angry all the time, bitter all the time? The enemy will always send thoughts and imaginations against us. And the reason is that he wants us to abandon, reject God's word, reject the great I am. He wants you, my friend, to receive his lies, his fear, doubts, oppression. And when you start doing that, it opens the door for other spirits to afflict us. Today God is saying to each one of us, cast your cares unto God, for He cares for us. He's telling each one of us to cast down imaginations and thoughts. Imaginations that come to you in a very smooth, systematic way, reasoning, taking you away from God's Word. And then these reasoning begin to multiply There comes a conclusion to say, why is it now that what I'm going through, God's word makes no sense? It actually makes no sense to believe God's word. 
There is a constant debate in our mind. And all these debates are to tear down our faith. All these thoughts are for us to quit and give up. Today God wants to teach each one of us that when our faith is tested, let us not quit. Let us continue to believe in the truth that comes from God's word. The Bible says in the book of Revelation that the Satan is accusing the brethren day and night. Accusing what? With lies. Bringing thoughts of lies. But we the children of God overcome Satan by the blood of Jesus and by the word of our testimony. We challenge every reason that goes in our mind with the word that the Lord has promised us. Make that commitment to the Lord. Yes Lord, I will spend more and more time studying your word, memorizing your word. Because without your word, none of us can captivate the thoughts of the devil. He constantly wants to put pressure on each one of us. And that's why these thoughts which look to be just thoughts, my friend, they are not just thoughts. They are the lies of the devil. They are demonic thoughts. And these thoughts come to us so that we reason and stop believing in the promises of God. Make that commitment to the Lord right now. That Lord, I am going to spend quality time with you studying your word. Today I met some people. They used to come when I first began to come to Dubai. And they said, I have not spoken to you brother but from the time I have been listening to the word, listening to the teachings, renewing my mind. The Lord has not only brought me out of my problems but today I have been blessed so much. I have been using the radio channel which gives me 24 hours teaching. Brother, it has set me free from all my bad habits. This word has set me free from my weaknesses. This word has brought joy and peace in my marriage. This word has changed my nature, my character. I was hugging this brother and crying. My friend, each one is going through trials, but this is the way, the way to victory. If you are a person who is just thinking that the preacher will come and lay hands on me and my trials will be over, you are wrong. It's just like a car that needs a jump start, the preacher can only give you a jump start. The Lord can hear every cry coming out of you. Tell the Lord and tell him, Lord, give me this grace from today. 
that I will spend more and more time with you in studying your word, in renewing my mind. Today you have taught me, Lord, how I can cast out every one of those thoughts and imagination by using your word. All this time I was thinking that these thoughts are just thoughts. But today, through your word, you have revealed to us that every one of those negative thoughts are Satan's calling card, getting me connected to Satan and the kingdom of darkness. All this time, Lord, I've been taking the bait. I've got hooked onto it. And all this time I've been coming to church but not understanding why the trials are still on. Why is there so much of evil? Why is there so much of confusion in my life? Lord, this truth has set me free. This truth has shown me the ways of the devil. This truth is teaching me to operate on your word and experience victory. My friend, 99% of the battle is won when a person makes a decision and sticks to the decision. The Spirit of God is moving in this place. As we have made that decision, the Spirit of God is going to strengthen you to keep that decision. There are some of us who like to debate on God's word. Make that decision, Lord, from now on I shall not debate but only believe. Make that decision like Joshua who did not know how to take the people of Israel to the promised land. He made that decision what God spoke to him. Three things. First of all, to master his tongue. Two, master his mind. And by doing this too, he was able to master his action. And doing these three things, he was able to make his way prosperous and successful. Right now, my friend, let us settle down in our spirit once and for all. And let us make that strong decision to spend quality time every day with God's word. Remember my friend, the testing of our faith does not work against us but works for us. Remember that. I repeat again, the testing of our faith does not work against us, but works for us. But we always have been taking our test, believing it's against us. It will be against us if we do not follow the instructions from the word. But if you are making that decision to follow in accordance to God's word, then it will work for you. The Bible says that the testing of our faith works patience and when patience has its perfect work in us, we will be perfected, matured, developed, entire, lacking in nothing. Everyone seated here is saying, God, I want a life where I am lacking in nothing. And God is saying to each one of us, 
This lacking in nothing will only happen when we are willing to go through these trials with faith and patience. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. 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 As you make this decision, Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Father, that you are not in his good in our next world. Lord, thank you that minds are in change, Lord. I went inside because he threw me 
And I remember what he told. So I began to use my hands and legs with full strength. And praise God, I came up. My, my mouth came up of the water. I looked at him and I stopped my hands and legs. And I said, help! None of you have got mercy. I went in and I realized he is only starting on the outside but not coming and I began to move my hands and legs again and I came up and within two minutes all my energy was over and I could use no more and when he saw that he dived into the water, brought me out and he said good but I told you when you come up don't stop, why did you stop? Now I'm still up <laughs> and he's holding me. He brought me out and told me, sit down here, I'll be back in 10 minutes and don't jump. I said, I jump into the water? I just got an experience. He went for 10 minutes of his swimming and I was watching him. And he came back and he said, are you ready? What should I say? Go, what should I say? No. I said, I'm ready. <laughs> Do you know why I was ready? Because I saw him enjoying the water. And here I was fighting with the water. And I thought to myself, if he can do it, I can do it as well. <laughs> the only difference is, he has learned. I have not learned. So I was ready. And he put me again in the same episode, but this time when I came out, I did not say, help me. I went on and on and on, and it happened three times. Three times he threw me, three times he brought me. Next day, he said, let's go for swimming. What should I say? Yes. <laughs> Who said yes? Let me see. Do, do you want trainers like that for training? Or do you want Baba Re Puta Puta? There are different trainers. Somebody will take you to the swimming pool, first teach you how to get into the pool. Two days will go there. Then they will do, do go, go into the water and do guru 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 guru. But my brother was not like that. He was a very rough trainer and he got a rough candidate as well. Praise God. The second day, I was already crossing the breadth of the swimming pool. Now, when I began to study about trials, this incident came to my mind. And I then realized that after years, I used to go for swimming every day. And I used to swim every day, five kilometers non-stop. So I would think, how is it, Lord? that the same person could not be two minutes in the water and all the energy is gone and the same person now swimming for five kilometers and still strong and the Lord began to teach me and say when you don't know the technique your body will use every energy and in two minutes you are completely tired and the same person who has learned the technique will use the energy in such a way that it will work like Duracell, long cell, the energy will go on and on and you cannot get tired. So in our trials, what has happened is, those trials have come, the enemy is there, but the problem is we can't see the enemy. But we can see his works. And not knowing the truth, we have only imitated people of the world and done things according to that system and came back more suffocating, more tired, more beaten up, more wounded. But, praise be to God, when you learn the technique, you will not only be swimming, but you will be swimming a long distance. Hallelujah! What is my witness? In my life, I must have said 
more than 100 people from drowning in real water. More than 100. And then when I was going through this trial, I began to wonder, and, I, and the Lord, the Holy Spirit reminded me and said, there was a time when your brother saved you. There was a time when your brother taught you the technique. But your brother doesn't swim five kilometers because he did not practice. But what you learned, you began to practice and develop more and more techniques from experts and you were able to go on a long journey. In the same way, my son, there came some people in your life who showed you the basic technique from the word of God and you began to float in the water, float in the storm of your life. But the more and more you got deeper and deeper and began to learn my technique. And when you learn that, you learn it in your circumstances. I could have not learned swimming five kilometers outside the water. <laughs> Hello, can I, can, I, can I learn swimming five kilometers outside the water? No. Or do I get into the water? <laughs> and, and, and when you're swimming, I, I, I don't like to play in the water. Some people don't like to play in the water. I will dive, finish my laps, and I'll be out. I don't play in the water. Now, when I'm going on laps, one after another, for one hour or something, some people will be thinking, this fellow is crazy. Why is he swimming so much? There's an army. There's a wish. And I want to achieve it. In the same way, in our trials, there should be a wish. There should be a target. And say to yourself, Lord, this is what your word says. I'm going to train myself. I'm going to learn your technique. I'm going to do your way. And I'm going to reach the other side. But this time, victorious. And teach others how great they can also do. They have come into your life to make you a better person, to build up your spiritual muscles, to build up your spiritual stamina. Hallelujah. 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 But how many of us treat trials for our good? And how many treat trials that this trial is going to kill me? It's the way I look. Give me 2 Corinthians 4 17. Do you like trainers like my brother? Hello? Yes. You know, in my personal life, even in my spiritual life, when I got people in the beginning who preach to me, I got a man uh, who wished to go to many dangerous places and preach the gospel. So I was about 10 or 12 years old and he was standing and he was playing with people. And I was standing beside him and he said, Lay your hands and pray. And I'm thinking I'm only 10, 12 days old and this man is saying, Lay your hands and pray. So I told him, listen, I, 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 uh, uh. before I could do something, he caught me, <laughs> looked into my eyes and said, When I tell you to do something, you only obey. Is that clear? Now, if somebody has to catch your collar, will you stay with him? Hello, will you stay with him? No. Do you know why I stay with him? Because my dad taught me a very good secret. I was a very good boy in my family. So dad was fed up with me. And he did not know what to do because my friends were plenty and they always had fights. So to keep the friends out, that would be in truck driving. So I became a graduate and then I became a truck driver for five years. Okay. Now the garage in Bombay and the garage in Goa is very different. The garage is in Goa, the shutters will open only at 12 o'clock and close down by 5. <laughs> but the garage is in Bombay, the shutters never close because they don't have shutters. <laughs> so when we would give 
a vehicle for repair, there used to be a small boy who the mechanic would give him barriers, take the spanner, hit on him, tell him to go and bring him tea and do all those things. And I would tell my dad, why is this boy still working with him? So my dad said, that boy is not getting any salary, but he's only working for one condition. He wants to see what this mechanic is doing every day because his vision is one day I will have a garage of my own. What my dad said, I never forgot. When this man bought my shirt, I would see when he would pray so many healings were there. So I became that small boy. And I said, I'm not going to go away from him. I'm going to stick with him and learn from him all the technique so that I also can do the same. <laughs> the problem with us Christians is, he said this to me, I'm not coming anymore. <laughs> she did not smile at me, I'm not coming anymore. Small, small issues and we get so much quickly offended and bitter and we lose what God wants to give us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. Thank you. So this man used to take me to places where we could be beaten up for, for preaching the gospel and he used to ask me, do you want to die in the hospital or do you want to die on the street? I said, for what? For preaching the gospel. I said, on the street. He said, come, let's go. So I got trained on the streets with people who are fearless to preach the gospel and bring Jesus to others. Those trials, train me. Those opposition, train me. And that's where those trials began to build me up and make me Someone who I was not. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Have you ever been impatient? Yeah, many times. Impatience comes when your faith gets tested. Especially when the exams are close at hand. Is the pressure at home on the men? All the men, when children's exams are close at hand, all the men will behave the best during that time. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have you ever been impatient? What's the reason of impatience? Let me give you an example. Husband and wife are having a good time. They are going by car and they are coming home. Everything was going on fine. Suddenly the wife says, Listen, for tomorrow chapati, there's no matter. So just stop by the, here there are two small groceries, stop by the mall only. Let the groceries shop there. That's a chair. Why do you come here? Come here, come here, sit here. Oh, here everything is in the mall. So the husband stops, the car, close to the mall, and the wife says, see this, when you are there, I don't carry my purse. So can you give me kitna bati ka aata kele? Kitna dena? So? Paaj das dena. Okay. So the husband, like always, ever loving, compassionate, you know, overflowing loving, opens his purse and gives the wife the credit card. He doesn't have change, he gives the credit card. The wife goes up and says, just wait for me in the parking lot, I'll be back in five minutes. Forty minutes are gone. <laughs> now what is the husband thinking? Huh? Oh, you know. <laughs> so after forty minutes, he picks up the phone to call up his wife. How will he call? Hello darling, where are you? Where are you? Why are you impatient? 
wise and patient because thoughts are running in his mind that my wife is an expert in shopping and by error I gave her a credit card and I don't know what she's doing with that credit card this God and when she comes back she comes back with that 5 kg Atta. And she said, listen, on the way I met somebody whose leg was twisted, I was preaching the gospel, and that person got healed. What is the husband saying? <laughs> I, are you understand? Yes. So what's the meaning of the word patience? Patience means, in spite of my faith getting tested, my attitude remains the same. Constantly, consistently remaining the same. Praise the Lord. Praise and when that happens, praise God, it brings maturity in a person. So a person, a Christian is not mature because he's preaching. A Christian is not mature because he's, he's in the choir. A Christian is not mature because he goes to church. The Bible says, a Christian is mature when patience has is complete work in him. Praise the Lord. Praise Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So for anybody who wants his trial to turn into victory, there are four key words from James chapter 2 to verse number 8. First one is consider or count. That is in verse number 2. Second one is knowing. Know. Knowing that when your faith is tested, it will work out in patience. Three, let, let, let what? Patience have its perfect work in you. And fourth, let him ask of God. Ask. Ask what? Wisdom. Praise the Lord. Just write down some notes. Uh, let, let's repeat the four words. First one is consider. Second one is knowing. Knowing what? That my faith is going to be tested. Third, let patience have its perfect work. So every time you are impatient, it's only because your faith is wavering and you are already in fear. Fear is the root. Impatience is the fruit. Faith is the root. Patience is the fruit. So faith and patience, they are brothers. Fear and impatience, they are brothers. So when a person is having faith and patience, the person will not be mature, but the person will reach to a destination where he lack nothing. When a person has got fear and impatience, that person will be immature and he will always have lack, confusion and all kinds of evil, <coughs> negative uh, things happening in his life. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's say you are only 15 years old and your great grandfather has kept huge, huge property for you and you are only 15. Can you get that property? No. Why not? Under, under. Huh? Under. You are not here? Mature. You are minor. In the same way, God is saying, all those blessings that you are asking for, I want you to inherit them. Not that you will work for them. I want you to inherit them. But the key to that inheritance is that you must what? Mature. Sure. So maturity comes out by your patience. In physical world, maturity comes out by the number of years. In spiritual life, it's not the number of years. It's how much are you operating in patience. So write down about patience. Patience is being consistently, being consistently, Constantly the same. Be 
patient, patience will bring us, patience will bring us to a point of completion. Patience will bring us to the point of completion. We will come out of the situation. We will come out of the situation complete, perfect, and wanting nothing. Did he react? No. They sold him as a slave. Did he react? No. 
Why did Joseph not react? <coughs> because his mind was fixed on the dream. My friend, if a person is sold as a slave, he would die as a slave. But still, he kept his focus on what God said. And that's what God is saying to us. We are definitely going to go through these trials and these trials are going to take us to the next level of promotion, to the higher level of promotion. But the question is, am I going to learn and train myself to keep my attitude on God? And if my focus is on God, then there will be no reaction, but there will be only action. Most of the time, when trials come suddenly, are we in reaction or are we in action? And if we have been having all the time reaction of outburst of anger and complaining and murmuring, is it going to build us to the next level? No. So how many years have gone by, we have not yet developed this kind of an attitude? And God is saying to us through James that these trials are meant to make you a better person and for each one of us, to enjoy that life in abundance. But are we willing to renew our mind? Are we willing to change? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Look at his attitude again. He is bought by 44. Okay. And then when he is bought and he is in the uh, Potiphar's house, a rich man's son is now a slave in an Egyptian master's house. What was his attitude? What was his attitude? Grumbling, complaining, or submitting? How many times do we live a life of submission? Submission to God's word will help us always to resist the devil. That's why God's word says first we will submit to God, then we resist the devil. First we obey God's word, then we resist every thought of the devil and the Bible says he will flee from us. But if we are going to allow those thoughts to play on our mind, then the devil will have a hold on us and destroy us. Our, our attitudes are going to be extremely negative. Praise God. Praise God. Now looking at his attitude, the Egyptian master could see that the Lord was with Joseph. The Egyptian master could see that everything that he put his hand on prospered. What is the Lord saying to us? If you are going through some trial in your life, ask a question to yourself. In this relationship that I'm going through, what is my attitude? Am I developing an attitude that God wants me to have? That God says, everything in your hand shall prosper. But I might be a person who is praying. I might be a person who is fasting. I might be a person who is doing all that. But when it comes to an attitude, I'm extremely negative. It will block my future. It will not only block my future, it will destroy not only me, but even my loved ones, even those around me, and destroy everything that God has planned for me. Praise God. Praise God. Now look at him. He is falsely accused by Egyptian master's wife. What is Joseph's attitude towards her? Is he cursing her? No. Cursing the Egyptian master? No. Submitting to God? Yes. Grumbling? No. Complaining? No. And he's put in the prison. And even in the prison, we find the attitude of Joseph is excellent that the jailer can take the jailer takes like him on. Why? Because of his attitude. 
If there are some people over here saying, nobody loves me, nobody likes me, ask a question, what is my attitude? If my attitude is of unconditional love, praise be to God, people will be attracted to you. People who are in trouble will come into your life and God has chosen you to be a blessing in their life. Every trial in our life is to build up our attitude. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Even in the prison, Joseph is having great fellowship with God, and there he begins to bless and help the prisoner. And that's the only place where Joseph begins to talk to the prisoner and say, When you go to the king, Please remind him of me. The prisoner forgets him. What is my attitude when I help somebody and that somebody forgets me, rejects me? Is my attitude cursing that person, grumbling? No. Reminding myself, so much I've done for this person, but look that this person has forgotten me. He has reached a position where he can do, use his influence and do something for me and this person is not even thinking about me. You don't find Joseph grumbling, complaining, murmuring. His attitude is still the same, trusting in God for his future. And that's the place. After two years of waiting, the king is in a problem. And he doesn't have a solution. And the same prisoner who <coughs> Joseph had helped comes after two years. He remembers what God had done through Joseph and tells the king, I know a person who can solve your problem. Imagine for Joseph in the prison in the morning, gets up and he doesn't even know by evening he's going to be a governor. Hallelujah. 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 What a lifetime labor cannot achieve, our attitude that draws God's favor can achieve in a single day. <laughs> what Joseph could not have achieved in his lifetime labor. Is constant trial after trial, and in every trial, just one attitude trusting in God. And when he's brought before the king, I like this. The king says, So you are the one who is going to interpret the dream for me? He says, No, not me. And the king is surprised and he says, My God shall interpret the dream for you. He doesn't take any credit for anything that he does. What an attitude. Friends, our future that God has for us is extremely, extremely great and awesome. That's why Jesus said, I've come to give you life, life in abundance. And God wants each one of us to enjoy this life. But this life will come only when a person has an attitude of joy, faith, and patience. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when you are with these three things, the book of James says, if you are a person with joy, you are a person with faith, and you are a person with patience, the fourth important key is, he says, ask for wisdom. What is wisdom? What is wisdom? Is wisdom knowledge? Knowledge is, right now the information that you are getting is knowledge. Then what is wisdom? Wisdom is, when I don't know what to do, God gives me a solution. God gives me an insight. 
God gives me a revelation of the facts that I already have. Through those facts, or through that information, He gives me something that I did not know all of a sudden that solves my problem is called wisdom. So God is asking us to do four things in a trial. First one, being joyful. Second one, walking in faith. Third one, developing patience. And fourth important one, in the midst of all that, asking God for wisdom. And the best part is, he says, he will give wisdom to everyone who asks of him. And he will give them generously, ungrudgingly. Why does God want to give wisdom to all of us? Because it is His will that we all overcome trials in life. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But the question is, am I a person who is asking God for wisdom? And, and He says, when you ask for wisdom, ask in faith. Do not waver. Because a person who asks wisdom in wavering will not receive anything from God. So anything we ask of God, we ask in faith means we are only single-minded people, not double-minded people, where there are thoughts of faith and there are thoughts of worry, anxiety and unbelief. If these two are together, the word of God says, let that man not think that he will receive anything of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 So the more and more we live in these four things in our life, we not only really experience victory in our life, we now begin to enjoy our life, which is life in abundance. And the more and more a person begins to develop this life of abundance and begins to meet other people the life in abundance that is there in that person begins to spill in other people's life and they also get into addiction of enjoying life in abundance that Jesus came to give us. So we Christians have to get into this life in abundance using these four tools. Hallelujah. 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 The more and more you get into this life in abundance, you have overcome circumstances in your life. You have come situations in your life. On Saturday, I was, last Saturday, I was in Goa. And there was this nurse who came to testify. This nurse has been coming to listen to God's word from the last nine years. She's a spinster working in GMC and she's working in a ward where cancer patients are treated after chemo they, they are in that ward and all of a sudden this nurse comes to know that she has got one of a rare cancer which eats up the flesh in no time it's a dangerous cancer and she has got that cancer she's young she is in the word of God, she is God fellowship with Jesus, fellowship with the Holy Spirit and she gets this news. What kind of thoughts should run in her mind? Now please understand this nurse has got medical knowledge. Two, she works in the same ward. Three, she treats patients who have taken chemo and radiation in the same ward. And now she finds that she has got a worse cancer in a body than then. What kind of thoughts should run in a mind? Yeah. Come on. And then she got this news. The other sister, the other nurses who are with her as a team, they sat together and began to pray and say to themselves, this cancer will not kill you, but we will destroy this cancer through the word of God. Yeah. And this nurse began to explain. She said, I thank God that nine years before God was training me 
with the word of God. He trained me. He taught me how to fight. And then the cancer came. I refused to accept it. I said, no, I don't accept it. And I began to fight with scriptures. There were times when I would fall. I would get into worry. When the pain would start, I would get, the symptoms would show up, I would get into worry. When I would go to my ward and see other patients who have taken the treatment and looking at their body being damaged, it, with my eyes what I would see would bring worry and fear. But thank God for those people who were with me that would pump into me faith and would pump into me the word and would pump into me that be patient, come on let's go and let's get this thing out. And we began to pray and pray and pray and pray and prophesy over our life. Surely I went to the doctor, surely I went to the operation, but praise be to God. I kept saying, Lord, as for me, there shall be no chemo, there shall be no radiation, every test report has changed in the name of Jesus. And I began to speak scriptures from morning to evening. I went to the operation, I came out, and they had a test done. And then I was lying on the bed, I kept saying, God, you said that you are healing. And if I am healing, what am I doing? on this bed. And I got out of my bed and I went out to other patients who were there. And I began to pray with them. And they said, listen, you just got operated today and how come you are out for that? She said, listen, my Jesus not only really took my sickness, he has, taken, he has taken my sin, he has taken my sickness, he has taken every work of the devil out of my life and I belong to Jesus. And there is no pain. He has healed me completely. And that's why I have come to tell you about what Jesus has done for me. after the meeting at night uh, after preaching the word of God late at night and we went to a bed and we did not find her there so we were wondering where did she go she was on the other side praying with others and reaching out to others and, and, she, and she said you know what brother I learned one thing in this trial first of all I did not focus on my trial using God's word I began to focus on others and those who are in a trial like mine I began to pump into them faith. The more I pumped into their faith, I got more faith. The more I began to do good to others, the more good came to me. And she was standing there and, she confer and, and speaking and she was saying, I brought the head of Goliath. There's no cancer in me. It has been completely destroyed. And these were her words. I never knew God had put me nine years before because He knew. And the best part is, today I'm working in the same ward and I've, and I've laminated my, my report so that when the patients come, I tell them, listen, I've mastered over that cancer. Now you have a choice. You have a choice. You can allow that cancer to master you and make your life miserable. Or else, with Jesus, you can master over your cancer. She said, now, that same Lord has become like a fireball for me. Every day, when the patients come, I pump into them the faith. And now, being a nurse has become such a good time for me. I, I, I enjoy my work now more than before, after this trial is over, because I've got the head of Goliath. I show them the head of Goliath and tell them, you also can get the head of your life. What's that? The same process. And each one of us can go through the same process or wait. It's not a love game. It's not a housing game. It's a game of skill. When Jesus is saying, I'm willing to teach you the secrets of my kingdom. And when I teach you, you can go on teaching others as well. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Let's close our eyes. <coughs> my friend, you heard the testimony of this nurse. In spite of that 
trial that she was going through, she had an attitude of a fighter. An attitude to fight the battle <coughs> with a faith. And this kind of attitude is extremely important in obtaining victory in our life, in experiencing life in abundance. She confessed with the mouth, saying, there were times when Satan put thoughts of death, of pain, of cancer, of other patients, of different kinds of imaginations in my mind. And then that happened, that was only stealing my joy. I began to realize that Satan cannot steal my joy unless I give it away. There were times when I gave up my joy listening to the lies of the devil. But I learned a good lesson. I can take my joy back if I focus on the word. So I was able to take that joy back. And once again, my faith and patience began to work. I began to realize that when my joy is gone, faith and patience is gone, and all that prevented me from enjoying that life that Jesus wants me to experience. In this trial, my brother, she said, my relationship with Jesus became so intimate that I had not experienced in my 10 years. I began to learn through the examples in the Bible God's plan, God's purpose, God's will for the Israelites was the promised land. But because of their bad attitude, because of their negative thoughts, because of their negative words, because of their negative actions, it all prevented them from entering and experiencing the good life in the land flowing with milk and honey. I said to myself, I will not do what the Israelites did and destroy their future. I began to fight back, speaking the word of God thousands of times out of my mouth. And the more and more I began to speak, the more and more I began to focus on the word of God again. It not only reflected on my mind, but it also reflected on my body. It showed on my expression, on my face. I began to experience peace even before the report could come. My friend, what kind of an attitude do you have? right now, in the trial that you are going. Because our attitudes will surely be tested. As the pressure comes, And there is intense thinking. What kind of an attitude are you developing every day in your life? Because we see in our real life 
people with bad attitudes live the most miserable, unhappy life. People who develop God kind of attitude experience God kind of life. This nurse challenged the cancer and would not allow a life to be governed by a negative attitude. Make that decision now, my friend. This is the time of healing. God has given us His word. The solution is to speak on a daily basis God's word and bring every thought into captivity. Let us not be like the Israelites whom God had given His word. He had given them the land flowing with milk and honey, but it was their bad opinion, bad thinking, bad attitude that stopped them from enjoying that life that God had planned for them. These testimonies are given in the Bible so that we learn from them and rectify our ways and experience victory in our life. O oh, loving Father, we thank you, we praise you for your word. At this very moment, O oh Lord, you can hear the whisper coming from each one's heart. In the past, commitments were made to spend more and more time with the world. But when temptation came, trials came, opposition came, pressure came, instead of focusing on you, we kept focusing on our trials and made decisions with anger and frustration. Please forgive us, O Lord. And at this very moment, we make decisions now to follow your way. O Spirit of God, <coughs> the word that has been preached let every person who is hearing it now respond to this word in agreement. Respond to this word with their faith so that just like Caleb and Joshua who responded with faith, they were the only two who not only entered the promised land but even their generations could enjoy it. Father, the decision that is made right now, let this decision of yours not only affect and bring victory in the lives of all of us, but also let our generations enjoy that life that Jesus came to give us through these decisions. We thank you, we praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Oh, let's give the Lord a big hand.
What's everyone? Now check your neighbor. Check your neighbor. Not everyone, no? Make a habit. It's a good habit. Consider it. Very important word, consider it. What do we consider in life? Usually? What are we considering? See, very important. Those who have not taken notes, please take down. First word, consider it. What are you considering in life? Considering the problems that you have, the job problems, children's problems, children's exam, children's result, attitude of the boss. Others attitude. What are we considering? Others attitude. What are we supposed to consider? Consider it all joy. All joy is the second secret. Not half joy. Nothing but consider it nothing. So whenever you are any thoughts come, you got to say negative thoughts. Consider it nothing. Let it be. We have the habit of saying, let it be actually. And forget about it. But how to forget about it? How to say, let it be with joy? Knowing. The second word is knowing. What do we know? We know about the problems that we are facing. Yes sir. We know about the sickness. Some of us are not medical students or science students. But when we know to get more knowledge, we'll go to Google search. Yeah. The moment doctors say something that they to know more, we will go in the Google. What are you supposed to know? Knowing that faith, testing of our faith. Knowing that there is this is testing of our faith. If there is anything going in our life, it is testing of our faith. My faith is tested. Many times we hear people saying, brother, my faith is tested. Yes, you are right. Faith has to be tested. Gold has to be tested. Also, it is tested, right? The what knife that he is talking about also is tested. No, there is a knife, not wife. <laughs> All the time he is saying about it. Wife also got a knife, but that's also tested. Yeah? Sorry? <coughs> That's a sword. What wife is having a sword? You're talking about knife that is tested. Yeah? So what is what you should know is that we are going through a test. We only know that children are going through a test. We forget that we also have gone through the test and this test is also our test. We are what are we trying to know about the sickness, about the problem? If somebody is going through a divorce case, we want to know how that has happened. <laughs> if somebody has got a miscarriage, we want to know the process, how that miscarriage took place. What are you supposed to know? What my son is doing, what my daughter-in-law is doing. Mother-in-law is so much interested in knowing that. I'm calling for five minutes not to approve what I'm planting. <laughs> You're asking them to do all this? <laughs> Am I approving? No, no, no. no. You're asking them you should know what the mother in law is doing. No, no, no. I'm saying what are we knowing actually? Okay. Please correct me. I'm not even whatever it is. Yeah, what do we know? What we talk is what we know. Do we know the word of God? Because when we don't talk the word of God, we don't know the word of God. So to know, we have to learn it. Please come. Then what we create, testing of our faith will give what? Patience. Patience. And patience will give us what? What it will make us? Perfect and complete. Another translation says perfect and complete. If anybody wants to become perfect and complete, he has to have Patience. How patience comes? Through the testing of our faith. Make some diagrams as you will learn, as you listen. Thank you. And then ask for wisdom. We 
they are asking only for car, asking for home houses, best places. What are we asking daily in our prayer? Are we ask, nobody is asking for wisdom. Lucky draw. Bumper. So ask for wisdom and what he says, he will give it gradually. Yeah? Praise God, a lot of things I found in I can tell you, after the preaching is over, we still together, right? Whether it's in Goa or in Dubai, I will always find my brother before he goes to sleep, all those notes he will type on his tab and prepare all those notes before he goes to sleep. So when I ask him, why now only you can do it tomorrow? No, no, today it's fresh. There is all that I want to put it under record and keep the file, and this file will save me on the day of my travel. These are the truths that keeps us on the journey of victory. In Goa, we have some brothers and sisters who are sending us big emails after the retreat. The whole thing, whatever has been thought, they will put it down on the email and send it. If you like, if you have time in Dubai, you can also email. So we can understand how many people are actually interested in the knowing the word of God. It's good for us. Yeah, otherwise, we are like fools coming and going, not knowing what is actually happening. Yeah, so you all can encourage us, saying that you all have taken notes and this is what we have done. Yeah, another good thing, another good thing, so we, we await your email ID. Email ID is there, Papa, Pastor, just put Brother Johnson's email ID on. Yeah. Uh, then Chinus was a wonderful man. I learned that he's a, he was single-minded and not double-minded. His focus all on Jesus, not on his daughter. If his focus was on daughter, then he would have been near her deathbed, seeing her pass away. Most of us see our loved ones pass away in the hospital or at home. We are not found in prayer. They are all that found looking at that computer in the ICU. What is that monitor? Computer. Sorry, monitor. And checking about all the everything. What we know everything what is happening in the hospital. Ah, we know. We know. What are you supposed to know? We know what the doctor has said. So he was single-minded. He comes, he looks at Jesus. The wonderful brother was teaching in Goa. He looks at Jesus. Means he knows who is Jesus. And falls at his feet and pleads. And Jesus is not saying a single word, okay, I will come, or I will come afterwards, or you don't worry. He doesn't say moment. He finds his attitude of humility. He is kneeling down, begging for him. He immediately takes the road. He leaves the crowd and goes with Jairus. Then comes a wonderful woman who delays. Yeah, and uh, I, there is nothing written about Jairus who says, Jesus, please, but my daughter is dying. Forget about that woman. Come. Completely he knows Jesus. He knows that he is coming means even if there is a delay, there is no problem. For us we want some things in, not most of the things we want in Ali. We can't delay. We want fast promotions, we want fast increase, fast healing. Fast trials. Fast? Fast trials. Trials, fast trials. Now what's next? If there is a problem, now what's next? Are we waiting for the testing of our faith? Because when is this going off? When is my mother going back home? <laughs> so one side, again when he, after the woman tells the whole story, what happens? The last the master, they come to tell the daughter is dead. See the delay, he could have said, Jesus, I told you that you should not have wasted your time with that woman. <laughs> that person. Why did you take a pause? <laughs> you can solve that. Yeah. 
frustration is all that yeah. And just all that he is doing is listening to Jesus. Instead of listening to his, oh, so are those servants who are maybe with him for 10 years, 20 years working at it for him, who, who, are, who are trusted servants, who, who has to believe, ah, oh really? Oh, then he has to start crying, he starts weeping. And tell Jesus, it's okay, no, 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 no. But he is waiting for Jesus to speak and Jesus says, fear not, only believe, only believe means have only one, don't have unbelief, only Single-minded means only the one who believes is supposed to be only single-minded, not both the things. He can get nothing. So what are we believing? We are believing the situation also and we are believing God also. We are praying also and we are worrying also. That is not called only belief. Praise God. Sorry, so many beautiful things brother is teaching. Mm. Okay, next. <coughs> Cross train. God bless you. Bless you as well. Let's close our eyes and thank the Lord. Father God, we are waiting. We want to learn two things. Do not be conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. Lord, each one of us over here want our life to be changed. And your word says, it is by the renewing of our mind, change of thinking, that our life gets transformed. Thank you, Father God, for showing us this truth. And all that you have spoken to us today, and shown us the truth, each one of us, have made a commitment to you to be single-minded, to train ourselves, to practice speaking your word, meditating on your word, listening to your word through CD, listening to the radio, and fighting this battle of faith and patience. Father, Every seed that has been planted is your incorruptible seed. Not let one of any one of the seed be wasted. Let every seed produce a harvest of our and fruit. We believe it, O Lord, and we confess it, and we receive it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.